Telling me about my first film, mm -hmm. which uh, I made like a 12 years ago, and it's funny how it's like uh, young young kids like approach me and say, "Oh, I love your film, man!" And I'm like, uh, "Wow, I mean, I made that film when you were like five, or, <laughs> you know, like uh, so so that's cool. That still has uh, people like you know engaged to the film." ¿Qué te hizo traer esta película de Lowriders? ¿Tienes alguna fascinación por los autos o creías que faltaba esta historia en el cine? Uh, I mean, it was an amazing opportunity, I, I felt. When Brian Grazer approached me to make this film, I was like, uh, yes. <laughs> you know, like, we have, yeah, I mean, like, uh, I, I took the opportunity. I was, like, there was, it's so rare that a producer like him would want to, you know, make a film about, like, uh, Latinos, mm -hmm. you know, or, or, or to be more specifically, like, Mexican-American, which is the largest uh, group you know, within the Latinos in the States. And, uh, and I was, I was and, and, I, and I loved, you know, the move to LA 12 years ago, and when I moved here, I, I uh, got some Latinos started hanging out in, the, in East LA and in downtown, and I fell in love immediately with the food, the culture, the music, and, uh, and I was fascinated how amazing the scene was, and how vibrant it was, and, and diverse, you know, and, and, uh, and I was like, and I, as a foreigner, you know, moving here, I was like, why Hollywood is not telling stories from that side of town when I find it so much more exciting instead of the old Beverly Hills movie, the old Malibu movie, and it's like a, where people, the, where the lives of people that nobody can relate to, you know, like a, because nobody lives like that. Uh, instead of telling the, I mean, because the art scene or, or the cultural scene that's happening in LA is influencing the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you go to Japan, Sweden, I don't know, name any country, you know, South Africa or any country is influenced heavily. The youth culture is heavily influenced by what's coming on the, from that side of town and nobody's giving them credit. Did you, did you think uh, the title, Low Riders? <laughs> uh, it, would, uh, it would give it because the, the yeah. film is so much about family. Yes, and and I know. Oh no, sorry. I I, I laugh because uh, that was our working title. <laughs> we never thought it was going to name lowriders. Uh, but 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 when we were testing the movie, uh, once one of the tests we named lowriders, yeah. and people were so excited because they like, oh, cars. I mean, because people is aware. There's an awareness of lowriders. You know, people don't know where they come from. You know, if they're African American, if they're Mexican American, where they come from, they know they are cool and they are gorgeous. That they know that about those cars. So people were super excited uh, when they went to see the film, and then when they left, we, we, we thought that they were going to be disappointed because they were going, "Oh, we're going to see a Fast and the Furious type film." And but but at the end of the screen, people like they love the film. They were like, "Well, we expect something different." No, but but we love the film. It's super cool. I mean, like we really we we, we like it a lot. So uh, we thought, well, it doesn't seem to hurt to keep that name and really, you know, uh, low riders in the film represents um, really, uh, how would you say, it's uh, somehow the vessel that takes Danny or that connects Danny to who he is, you know, to his culture, to his background, you know, and uh, somehow he learns of, of who, uh, of where he comes from and his family through low riding. So I thought, I mean, why not? I mean, it's a very central theme of the film, you know, the car. So. How familiar were you, with, were you with the lowrider culture? Did you learn it when you were here in LA, or did you kind of were aware of it? Uh, no, I mean, I, I, I was very aware of it because I've been working uh, for youth audiences, I mean, as a creative director for a long time. I used to be creative director for MTV Latin America. So I was very connected with lowriders uh, in general, and, and uh, and, and I'm gonna give credit to a friend of mine <laughs> who, when I moved to the States, I came to study film, uh, uh, study film, you know, for college. Uh, I met a guy, he, well, he became, for, uh, well, he's now the former creative director of Wired magazine. And in college he was a graphic designer and he was from Torreón. So he, he lived that, even though he was on the Mexican side, he lived that Mexican-American 
within the culture. Be Paisano. <laughs> and he introduced me into the music and the food and the culture. And so, and he, uh, and I fell in love with the culture because of him. And so I already knew about it, but I was, when it was not until I moved to LA that I really uh, became aware of its meaning, which I think is beyond just like a piece of art because it represents family and tradition. So how familiar were you with uh, Esteban Oriol and Mr. Cartoon uh, mm -hmm. prior to working with them on this project? I knew of them obviously because I mean they are famous artists. So I, I mean I, I look at them like very from very, you know, like that, I mean look, look up to them, right? Like they were uh, reachable. And so when, uh, also when uh, Brian told me that they were involved in the project, because this project was born uh, from really, before I got involved, it was Brian and Esteban and Cartoon. They met 10 years ago and, and that's how the project started. And, uh, and, and yeah, I mean, uh, I, I'm, I knew of their work. I mean, uh, and I was always a fan of, of their work, so super excited to work with them. How involved were they in the creative process? Very. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, everybody, like, yeah, uh, Bri yeah, Brian, Esteban and Cartoon, like, if, like, Brian brought all his experience on how storytelling, right, and at the same time he was, like, a, you know, he led me, he made the film that I had in my mind, and uh, Esteban and Cartoon was, uh, were amazing, I never asked you, I mean, really they were our filters, like, everything went through them, like, we really want to make sure that the film was as authentic as possible. So uh, they brought all the cars <laughs> on the film, you know, they brought all the clubs, they brought uh, all the graffiti artists, all the art that you see was created on the film by artists that were uh, part of their uh, group, you know, and uh, uh, the airbrush artists, uh, the muralist, and, and so, yeah, and the tattoo artists, so everybody was, uh, came from, and they approved all the wardrobe and uh, brought all the brands that were accurate, you know, like, uh, so, and, and, and yeah, I mean, uh, and it, what it was beautiful is like, a, I think we, we, we show, uh, I mean, a, a, a Mexican American culture from every angle, you know, from the most traditional, from Miguel's side, you know, very traditional, more old school way of seeing, you know, from, from a ghost, which is a little bit older than Danny, so he's a, uh, still young, you know, but 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 the way he dresses is a little bit different than Danny. And Danny being younger, he lives in this more like global culture, right? Like a, he's like a, you know, I think kids uh, today they live in this very universal culture. Like they're all very connected. They consume the same product, wear the same clothes, and uh, at the same time, I think like that makes them smarter in a way because they are so much more open-minded, right? They are like so open to everything. They are, they don't discriminate anything because they, they, be, they seem very young age, they're exposed to everything. Well, so, what was it like shooting from inside the, uh, one of the cars jumping? Besides, <laughs> you know, that scene when uh, Danny and uh, I know, uh, girl. Yes, uh, <laughs> that, that, I mean, it was a little bit scary. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because they're a little bit unpredictable, right? Yeah, like, yeah, um, yeah. And uh, I mean, it was obviously very controlled. Uh, and I guess it was a lot of fun. It was envious of uh, Gabriel and Elisa who were inside of the car, you know, mm -hmm. while it was hopping. It seemed like they had a lot of fun, so. And you got a great cast. You got yes. Supergirl in the movie. I know, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Damian. Who's well, I mean, we, we cast Melissa because of Whiplash. Because mm -hmm. I, I saw her work on Whiplash and I was like, wow. I mean, her work, I thought it was amazing. So I uh, met her and, uh, you know, she did the scene with, with Danny and they had this chemistry and, and so... She's totally unrecognizable. I mean, I had to look twice to see yes. if it was actually her. I know, a lot of people don't, don't cannot tell. It's, it's funny, right? Yeah, I, I mean, it's just like some little changes in the makeup that make her look like a different person. But, uh, was this during uh, uh, her uh, Supergirl period? Sorry? Uh, was this done during her Supergirl period? No, before. Before, that's oh, okay. Yeah, like right, right, right before. I remember actually, uh, I'm a friend of one of the CW lawyers. <laughs> I'm from kids on the same school, and he was telling me, don't uh, put Melissa in any danger <laughs> because she has a side contract with us. You know? yeah, yeah, she's not getting into no low rider, don't worry. Yeah. Uh, what about Damian? I mean, he's going to do you know, bigger Hollywood films, but it's nice to see that he goes back. Well, he's not, this is not his roots, but it yes. is Latino culture. Yeah. Well, um, I, I mean, there's. I don't know, Damian's an amazing actor. To me, he's one of the best. Uh, working actors today. Uh, 
he's a very giving actor uh, and uh, thoughtful, you know, like a, and extremely professional. There's a, what's the word? Like a, Eva, I saw telling that story. Uh, you know, that dinner scene the, at the beginning of the film where Damon is eating, Miguel is eating chicken. You know, we had to shoot from many angles, right? <laughs> the scene and cover every character. Even if the camera was not shooting him, he was eating chicken. And I, I like you don't have to eat the chicken. Like you're not on, you're not on camera. Doesn't matter. They need me to see me eating chicken. And he did. And I was like, oh, okay. And he had like a ton of chicken that day. Like I don't know how much. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, but those are the little. Uh, and he never complained. He was like, uh, no, no, let me please, please. I want to do it because I want to make sure that you know that the other the rest of the cast, you know, really feel the scene and that I'm not just like standing there delivering that. So, I mean, and he's the kind of actor that makes other actors better actors. And yeah. he's uh, also the kind of actor that really take, he took care uh, of the younger actors and, and, and helped them feel comfortable and make sure that they they, 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 they were able to get what, what they needed from him to make their performance better. So it was an amazing experience working with him. Talk to us about the transformation that he went over. I mean, he Yeah, did, I mean, uh, he did yeah, physical transformation. Was crazy. He came from a... Uh, what's a, uh, the Tarantino movie, Hateful Eight, with like this huge, massive beard, right? <laughs> and, uh, and like a completely different look. And uh, we talked uh, about, like I wanted him to look, you know, like a, like a lowrider, and a lowrider style, you know? So uh, we didn't specify. And it was kind of hard, you know, because like if you're looking at somebody to really like transform his face, like cut his hair, so, uh, we could talk about it super, like a little superficially, and when he finished his full days, you know, we met again, and he came all shaved with a mustache, and I was like, "Whoa, you look amazing!" And thank you, <laughs> yeah, you beat me. Like I didn't have to ask you; you're, you're right there. So, so uh, yeah, so it, he he just showed up like that. <laughs> Can you talk about, briefly about the logistics about filming in Los Angeles? The mm -hmm. privilege it is to be able to make your film here, yes. and uh, the fact that you made our city uh, look beautiful. Oh, thank you. I'm so, glad. So glad you thank like you. That. Yes. Yeah, I, I really wanted to shoot it. I mean, this movie needed to be shot in LA. Uh, I would I wouldn't have shot this film if it, if we couldn't film this film here. Uh, I really wanted to showcase the places <laughs> that, uh, that, uh, that 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 uh, where I've been hanging out and 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 for people to see. Uh, and it was an amazing experience, you know. Like people was super helpful, super excited about. Uh, uh, it was cool because like uh, from the uh, the location manager, he was so excited that we were showing all these locations. You know, he was like so happy that we were like actually showing these this, this, that, that, this places on film. Uh, and yeah, I mean, the experience was, 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 was great. I mean, uh, the, the challenge for the film was like, uh, we shot it in four weeks. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow, really? <laughs> yeah. Was, you, uh, yeah. You had a short time for it was, it was a, That was a, the biggest challenge. It's but like we, a but Richie film. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 I mean, not, not, not by choice. I mean, we had a limited budget, but uh, we had an amazing team. Uh, we had, uh, so we, we had to shoot fast but we were we went super prepared into everything like we knew exactly what we wanted to shoot because we knew otherwise we didn't have time to uh, but we shot most of the scenes with three cameras and everything was handheld so that we could move fast you know and like uh, stylistically it helped because I really wanted to feel the movie the movie very present like like we are there in the moment like like audiences to be participants of the film not just spectators so that helped to get that feeling uh, at the same time, help us move faster. That, uh, with the DP, we would prepare the day, you know, making sure, like, oh, we knew the sun was going to be there at that time of the day, so we would shoot it from this angle, blah, blah. blah. So, and the, the the camera operators that, that we had were amazing. One uh, one of them was a camera operator for Revenant. <laughs> so he was, uh, oh, one, uh, James, uh, one of the camera operators, he was nominated for an Oscar. He was a DP of Moonlight. And uh, the other camera operator, he was uh, one of the uh, American hustlers. Uh, so we had like a great team that helped, and that you know we, we we they knew the style that we were going after visually, and so I didn't have to to be specific like a, in our visual. Oh, move the camera to the left or to the right, or, or they already like every time they show me what they were shooting, it looked beautiful to me. 
So uh, that really helped uh, the process go, to go faster. And I like, um, it, you have to be careful with some of these films because it could be either yeah, very stereotypical, you show like one side, Yes. Um, but you kind of vary where you have a girl who's going off to college and you have this yeah. guy who's kind of a rocker guy skating. Exactly, yeah. You know, so was that a challenge to make it balanced so that you show all sides of Latino, not just like people from the lower writing culture? Well, I mean, uh, I, no, that was a conscious uh, decision that uh, I w wanted to show uh, diversity within a uh, subculture of Latino, mm -hmm. right? And uh, to see that that culture clash that to me is fascinating, that always happens, right, in, within every culture, you know, like a younger generation uh, clashing with, the, uh, with their parents or the older generation, you know, and then having that, uh, uh, I don't know if we already discussed, sorry, uh, just came from another interview, so I don't know if I'm repeating myself, but uh, something that attracted me a lot about this film was that uh, coming of age story, right, which is like super, very universal, like uh, when you're a kid, you rebel against who you are, where you come from, because you feel that, that I mean, that's just not cool, you're embarrassed about your father or, or your culture, and as you grow older, uh, it, you, you realize that the most valuable thing that you have is who you are and where you come from. You know, it's the thing that you're most proud of. And uh, that's, again, going back to low writing, right? And that's what low, writer, low writing does for, for Danny. <laughs> Thank you.